All right, so let's do a quick video on using PropStream to find cash buyers around a property that we have for sale. The reason we would do this is cash buyers, um, the right cash buyers, especially around a property we have, are going to be the perfect buyer for us to quickly sell a property. So we like to usually go after a cash buyer first when we have a home uh, that is not in retail condition to see if they might have an interest in purchasing it prior to us potentially fixing it up. Uh, so let me show you here. We're at the uh, PropStream main interface. The only thing we need to use here is our search. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is use the search bar to find properties around our subject property. And we're going to use this 55 Abalone Road. Uh, but just to show you in general, for instance, Venice, Florida, uh, we could type in Venice, Florida, and PropStream is going to show us the entire Venice, Florida area, and it's going to give us all these records here, uh, which if you want to look under unique properties, you can see the total count. So we have 51,624 records, and this is actually just breaking it down um, into different amounts. So we could narrow this down by filtering, or we could just get a little more specific. So we know the property that we need cash buyers in is in 34293. So we could use that as the way we search for cash buyers. And you can see when we drill into just that specific zip code, we have 4,527 total cash buyers. Um, so you can see this unique properties, that 28,000 is for the entire zip code and all types of properties, no matter what it is, a cash sale, an MLS, an active deal, um, everything. Second we click on cash buyers, it's going to change this over here to the 4,527, so we match up. Uh, so you'll notice when you apply filters and you click on items and get more specific, our unique properties will always decrease um, or be even um, with all of these totaled up. Hope that's not too confusing. But all we care about is narrowing down our results, selecting our results, and then adding them to specific lists. And we will start by going back to what we stated, which was cash buyers. But I want to use a specific property address. I'm going to use this address right here. Uh, this is the property we would like to wholesale or sell prior to working on it. And uh, once you have the property, uh, you can just click details here. Um, or if you click on the property, uh, the same box pops up and we can click on details there. So here's our subject property. Uh, we're going to come over here to the comparables and nearby listings. And here you go. You recognize those boxes from our main uh, site-wide search. So what we're going to do here is we're going to click on cash buyers. And what this is showing us, uh, for cash buyers, it's set to a distance of one mile. And that cannot change within this field. We could do that on the main search, but not once we have a specific property we're looking at. It's going to be specific to this one mile. If we were looking at MLS comps, we can up that to two miles, but cash buyers will not allow us to do that. If I put in a two, you're going to see it spins, it stays there. Yet, if I went to half a mile, this will drop. So you can see one mile is what we have to work with, which is fine. That's perfect. So one mile from around this property, we have 150 potential cash buyers. We can filter that down a little bit more. So we could say that uh, we only want this to show single family. Um, you see the number stayed the same, but I'm going to tell you why. Because this whole area of uh, Venice is single family homes. Uh, there aren't condos, townhouses, anything like that right here. Uh, but we can get more specific and do a sale date range. So if I want to just look back to a year ago, I could put this like that leave the max max is gonna should be set to the current day so today would be March 18th so oh I'm sorry this is still set to 2019 so we gotta bring this back up 18 and here we go we got 54 cash buyers within a mile of our property uh, that have purchased all in the past year and are single-family homes 
it says multi parcel sales um, you can leave that that's completely up to you uh, but if we want to go through these records here we could actually go through them and uncheck maybe sales that don't look like they fit our criteria maybe uh, it's just too high price of a home or uh, when we look at what the sale amount was versus what the estimated value of the property was. Uh, so this estimated value here and this sale amount, I, I like to look for properties where the sale amount was lower than the estimated value and a good amount lower because that would mean they bought the property distressed. So for instance, uh, this property right here, it sold for 109 or 110,000 and it was estimated to be worth 169. So they got a deeply discounted deal right there. So there's a good chance that was a buyer, a savvy buyer, an investor. Uh, so the owner of this property currently would be somebody I would wanna have a record of. Uh, I like to uncheck all the records and then just select the ones that I'm interested in. So for instance, that one, uh, I like that property. I liked what the estimated value was versus the sale amount. Uh, some other things, uh, that's really it what I like to look at on there um, if I know I don't want I don't really care about properties that sold for say 500,000 uh, that's something you can also filter down uh, you can't filter that down in this exact search but on the uh, more generic and larger search uh, it will let you uh, sort by price uh, also uh, like we already showed uh, the property type and there's just a little bit more filters uh, but for this one, I am going to strictly use sale amount versus estimated value. So I'm just going to keep coming down here and I glance over at estimated versus the sale. Um, usually I'll focus on sale first and I'll just look for low price sales. Um, I know the values of this neighborhood, so that's easier for me to do. Like I know a 2-1 should sell for around 170000 like this says. So I know that that was a good buy. I know 240 for a 2-2 means it's in a nice area and it might have been a brand new house for all I know if we were to pull that one up uh, sometimes if you scroll back over you'll see there are photos of these properties if you wanted to check that out uh, a lot of times if you see the photo button it means uh, that it was on the MLS or it's an MLS comp since there's photos showing uh, but I'm gonna get this so that I can see what that uh, last sale amount was in the estimated I'm just gonna go down on this list and show you how I quickly add them so this property right here hundred thousand I want to add that one 240, 100 on 141, uh, 101 on 255, I definitely wanna add that. And you could also have all of them selected and uncheck ones you don't want. So there's different ways to do it. You can see it keeps scrolling me back up as I click on them. There's sometimes some kinks in prop stream. I guess you can't have everything. <laughs> so let's see, just going through my list. I'm, I'm really trying to show you guys exactly how I do this. I want you to see the time it takes uh, to accomplish this and the type of results we're going to get. You see, it might help you determine is this really worth your time or is this something you should outsource? And if you do outsource it, uh, how much time is it looking like it might actually take somebody? And you know, that always, of course, helps you figure out what you should be paying somebody and the expectation for them to complete the task. But you can see as I uh, click on each of these, it's a little frustrating how it brings us back up to the top. It does not make it uh, where we're doing this that quickly. Uh, you just got to remember where you were when you checked on it. All right, 150 on 215. That's a good one. Well, we're getting close to wrapping this up. 100 on 160. That's a good purchase. 260, 242 on 265, 81 on 93, 220, 234, 230 on 210, 182, 97, 207 on 208, 195 on 175, 205, so that was pretty good, 30% discount. It's a higher price, but I'm still going to make sure they're selected. We got 200, 208, 135 on 170. It's not that huge, but it is a 3-2. It's a property that could be worth 200000 I'll check on that anyway. All right, so this is our little gap that we got left, and it looks like that is all. So we have selected 13 um, from what originally was showing us 150 cash buyers. Uh, so I'm just showing you how quickly you can narrow this down. This has just taken us maybe a total of uh, five, 10 minutes to knock this out. So we've got all those selected. 
And now what we want to do is add them to a list. What list? Well, let's create a new one. And what are we going to call this list? We're going to call this list our 55 abalone cash buyers. And boom. All right, so I've got those records. Uh, what we can do is we can also go in here. Uh, we can actually save to a group. Uh, these are under my properties right now. Um, all right, so if we wanted to do this on a larger scale, so let's just say we were thinking, all right, well, 13 is not that large of a number. Now what do we do? Well, uh, let's do something a little different. Let's actually draw an outline. So we know our property is located uh, right here. This is where our property is, right where these two roads meet. I know this area and I know this whole area is all very similar type properties. So what am I going to do? I'm going to draw this whole section out. I just right clicked and you'll see it's going to give us all our results. So this whole area has 4,500 cash buyers, 2,700 results. Well, all I care about are the cash buyers within this section. So we have our 4510. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna use the filter here, which is a little bit different than the filter you guys saw last time, which was within the specific property record. Now we're talking general. So here we go, we've got our outline we drew. Another example of this could have been if we had just put in a zip code. So we've clicked on cash buyers, but we have not filtered. So characteristics. What do we want? Well, we only want single family and multifamily buyers. We also only want to do this for specific time of sale date. So a year back is what I always like to do. I like to look for people who have just in the past year been buying cash. And by default, it will be our most recent day. So right now we've got cash buyers, single family, and purchased in the past year. And one other thing I'd like to filter down, last sale price. I don't wanna deal with any buyers who have been purchasing over 300,000. Why? Uh, they're looking for different types of properties and, and that's my main reason. So there we go. We can close this and you can see we have dropped our list of cash buyers down to 252 based on that criteria in this entire area. We know from what we already did that we've got ourselves about 13 that matched our results just within a mile. Uh, this is a little bit more broader range because this is specific to that. And what we can do here is the exact same thing we did. And yes, we have six pages. So it will take us a little bit longer. You can also do list view. Uh, but what I will tell you is you can have this fly out here so you can see a lot more of that information. Uh, but the information we want is actually viewable even just right here. We have estimated value and sale amount. So that's perfect for us. Um, so we can select those. Uh, just one thing to notate, if we select a property, so we just selected this property here, uh, we just selected this property, this property, let's select this. So we got three selected. So if we hit next, you'll see this. Let's go back. They're still selected. So you can go through all of these pages, select what you want, and then add to your list. So that is just another way to get even more results for your cash buyers. So before, just within a mile of our property, we only had 13 once we narrowed it down. Well, this format is going to give us a potential 252. Thing is, is we know those aren't all going to work, but if we do what I said, which was uh, look for a low sale to the value, uh, it's a good way for us to find some discounted uh, cash buyers uh, that are potentially going to be the buyers of our property. So that's how I quickly do a cash buyers list. The most tedious part, of course, is going through here. Uh, I like doing it on a more broad search level. Uh, especially for creating my list. Um, it's just easier. It's not as buggy as uh, the other pop-up detailed window. Uh, I can go through it a lot quicker. Uh, I always like to, again, look at my sales price, compare it to my estimated, look for big discounts, and uh, select those as my potential cash buyers. Uh, usually if you're seeing a close estimated value to cash sales price, it's probably a retail one-off buyer. Could that have been a short-term uh, 
vacation rental type buyer and they will pay retail, it could be. But uh, most likely it's not the type of person I'm going to be looking to work with. I am looking for people buying uh, heavily discounted uh, and that are willing to spend that kind of money for the type of property I have. And that's where I will find the biggest chance and success of finding cash buyers and unloading a property. So I hope that was useful. And if you have questions, hopefully they can be answered in other videos or just give me a shout or send me an email to greatdameproperties at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.